Are you looking for affordable office space in Marion? The professional building located at 685 Delaware Avenue is the place for you. For more information, call 740-383-6803. Office space is now available. Again, telephone number 740-383-6803. This is Scott Spears, and today I'm joined by a Marion, Ohio icon, and there's no disputing that. Other than President Warren G. Harding, she is the only citizen from Marion to hold office on the national level. She is the 40th Treasurer of the United States of America and a good friend of mine, which I'm very happy about, Mary Ellen Withrow. Mary Ellen, how are you? Oh, I'm just fine, Scott. We could title today's program, Mary Ellen, This Is Your Life, because we're <laughs> going to go back and look at all the great uh, highlights and the fun and the beginning and where we are now. And we've also got some treats uh, uh, here in the studio. We've got the dress. We're not going to show it yet, but we've got the dress you wore when you were sworn in as national treasurer, which I'm sure is probably in more pictures. Then, then well, you know, I tried to find pictures of it, and uh, it didn't show up um, very well in the pictures that I had. I was either sitting down or, you know, cut off by a desk or something. And um, But I probably have pictures over in my memorabilia, that, but I didn't go through those pictures because there's millions <laughs> over there. I, what, what, <laughs> would you say that you've been photographed just because of that day in this dress more than any other clothing? No, no I, I don't think so. Um, I, I've had, um, uh, I, I tried to keep it so that my I had on different things in different pictures because you don't want to look at the pictures on the wall and you all have the same dress on. Did you wear this any after the swearing? Yes, event? I wore it. I, I had it on in a trip. Yeah, I wore it. Uh, yeah, it, it was uh, worn other places, but um, it, it was... Um, uh, the fact that you uh, you're kind of careful where you wear it, you know. I, I I've got to ask you this, uh, even though we're not going to show it yet. But uh, th this is kind of funny. You've told me this before. Uh, you have no sentimental value to this dress, <laughs> e even though it's the dress you were sworn in as national <laughs> treasurer, and your kids saved it from. Well, from I was going to give it away, and they said, "Oh, you don't want to do that." Yeah. <laughs> well, now, why do you think you don't have any sentimental value to it? Well, it's just a dress. But a, but an important day. I, I, yes, but, um, I mean, I've got the memories of it. Uh, it doesn't take a dress to make me remember everything that uh, took place. Do you have any piece of clothing that is important to you? Not really. Or maybe no. it's just a clothing thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because you've kept other memorabilia. Yes, yeah. I, I did. I kept um, things that I thought I should keep, but... Um, well, I <laughs> that's enough on the dress. <laughs> we're, we're, you don't want to talk about the dress. We're going we're to get you. We're going to show it because people okay. will remember it, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. But let's start chronologically. Let's go back to the beginning. When and where were you born? I was born in Marion County, north of Marion, about eight miles north. <laughs> do, do you want to say the year and the date? Oh, yeah. I was. Everybody knows. I was born in 1930, October 2nd, 1930. So, and when we're taping this, uh, you will soon be coming up on 82. That's right. Can you imagine that? No, I can't. <laughs> what, you know, I hear people who get in their 80s and 90s, and they say, when I was younger, I never thought I'd live this long. That's, that's true, yes. Well, yeah. nobody in my family did. I, I'm, I'm, setting <laughs> I'm setting a record. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that now that you're here a couple weeks a couple weeks before the 82nd, yes, how right. do you feel? Oh, great! I feel great. <laughs> and, and happy you made it this far. Well, absolutely, yes. And I've got plenty to go. Yes, I I don't want to quit yet. So. <laughs> that and you and you're not absolutely not. Um, have you done anything special over the years to reach this age? Exercise, eat right. Mm -hmm. Yes, I swam a lot. I taught swimming at one point. Um, I had my. Um, Life life saving credentials, and um, I I try to uh, eat properly. Although I don't always, I'm just like everybody else, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst part of getting to be eighty? Well, you know, it's uh, 
you know you're getting older, and that's not, <laughs> you, you don't like to think of it in those terms, but you have to. So uh, I can't run anymore. I, I, I keep saying, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, you just, uh, you, there, you can't do the things you used to do. So it, it's a different uh, lifestyle. You know, I, this is not singled out toward you, but I ask this because I'm curious of, of every senior citizen, and one day hopefully I hope I will get there because everybody wants to live long. Do you think about death when you get oh, to be a certain well, age? Oh, yes, you do because it's all around you, yeah. Do you have a belief of what happens when you die? Yes, I'm going to keep on going. Keep on <laughs> going. There right. you go. Yeah. So you, you have a strong belief that there is heaven? And oh, yes, uh, absolutely. Has that always been ingrained in you? I think so. Uh, not so much when I was younger, but I think they sort of changed their philosophy in the uh, preaching. You know, they used to talk about fire and brimstone, but I, I think they've changed that uh, direction. Your childhood, your adolescent years, uh, up to 18, what was it like? Well, I had a, a wonderful, I had wonderful parents. I, um, I took piano lessons. I took singing lessons. Um, I don't know. What else? You know. Did you play sports? Did you? No. Well, I tried to play basketball, but I was too short. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you involved in any activities in school? Any extracurricular? Oh yes, I was in the um, um, the drama club. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, props and cues. I w well, actually, I was treasurer. Is that right? <laughs> of props and cues. Yes, and uh, I was in junior lecture recital, and um, I was in 4-H. I you know I had the winning outfit uh, at the fair. I, I made a um, wool suit with a pleated skirt, plaid, which was difficult. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and I won uh, overall first place. Uh, I can't tell you what year that was, but I think I was probably about a uh, sophomore or junior. Yeah. Uh, what high school did you go to? I went to Harding. I, I went to Grand Prairie for elementary, and then we could either go to Morrill or Harding, and I went to Harding. When people came up to you up to 18 years of age and said, Mary Ellen, what do you want to be when you grow up? What was the answer? No, I didn't have a, I didn't know. Had no idea? No, I didn't. I, I did not have anything in mind um, uh, at all. Uh, I've been asked that before. In fact, I think you might have asked me that. <laughs> and it's strange that I didn't, but I didn't. Do you still play the piano? No, I don't, because I gave my piano to my daughter. Um, and uh, I, I, I got very serious about my piano. Uh, I, I was... Um, I, I, w I was a serious student. <laughs> well, you, you also paint. I've seen some yes. of your paintings. Yeah, I paint. Uh, I didn't do that until I was married. Yeah. Where did that come from? Was that taught, or did you just have that ability? Well, when my father died, uh, I wanted to uh, get my mother started on a project, and so I, I signed up for art lessons, and uh, she took them, and I took them, and that's how it got started. And um, it uh, developed from there. And they really are. I mean, these are very nice paintings that you've done. When's the last time you painted? Well, I, um, I, I did some of my Christmas cards when I was state treasurer. They weren't painted. They were um, drawn. But um, it would have been uh, when I was, uh, it was before I got into politics. I didn't do much painting after I got into politics. When you were in high school, did you ever think about going to college? Yes, I was intending to go. Yes, um, I had. Uh, I was uh, going that direction. I took college prep and um, and then changed my mind. Yeah. Was there any reason you changed your mind and decided not to go? Well, um, there was. Um, uh, um, there was a scholarship uh, that I was to get that I didn't get. And um, what happened then, uh, I decided that um, 
I was going to get married, <laughs> and that's what I did. Well, let's talk about that. Your husband is Norman Withrow. Mm -hmm. What was your maiden name, by the way? Heinemann. Heinemann. Mm -hmm. And your mother and father's name? Uh, Vella and uh, Clyde. Oh. Um, when you got, when did you meet Norman? I met Norman when I was 15 at uh, the Y. Uh, there was an older rural youth group, and um, you were supposed to be 16, but I went when I was 15. And um, so, yeah, we uh, dated for two and a half years and uh, then got married. How did you know he was the one? When did you know? Oh, I thought I knew when I saw him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about him? Oh, I, I just liked him. Yeah, he had a good sense of humor, and um, yeah, we we got along well. And and what year of marriage are we in now? 64. My goodness, <laughs> 64. Yeah. Mary right. Ellen, how do you keep <laughs> that going? Oh, boy, I tell years. you, yes, that's a long time. That's another thing you never think will happen. You know, you'll never... I, I remember I had somebody in my family that had been married 75 years, and I thought, my heavens... I'll never make that, you know, because 75, well, we we, we got 11 years to go until we get to that one. <laughs> you could make it. <laughs> Who knows, yeah. D have you argued? What keeps it oh, going? Oh, heavens, yes. How do you, how do, you do it? <laughs> how, do, how do you keep that going for six? That's a long time. It is a long time, but uh, well, it takes <laughs> takes a lot of, uh, uh, you you have to uh, have a lot of consideration of the other person, I think. Over the last 40 years, certainly in that marriage, I think you have been front and center just with your political career. He was front and center, though, with his um, his golf. I mean, he was winning all sorts of golf tournaments, and um, he was known for his golf expertise. Was that ever a problem? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. <laughs> and, and in what way was it a problem? Well, it was just that uh, he spent too much time at it. <laughs> <laughs> did did he ever get did he ever get angry with you for? Because I imagine your jobs took you away from home a lot. Yeah. Uh huh. W was that time apart for him ever an issue that he no, wasn't with you? You know, no, it wasn't. Um, he uh, he was always very supportive. He always had my back, and. Um, it, he knew that it, um, that I wanted to do that, and uh, it was fine. Yeah. So you're making it sound bad here. No, no. That <laughs> that, that actually, I think that's the key to it. <laughs> yeah. Supportive. Yeah. That oh. he was the one. Well, yeah. But I mean, uh, you know, it was um, it was not easy. I'll put it that way. You know, the whole thing. I mean, what we did. His his interests and my interests were two different things, and. Um, um, and we'd talk about, before I ran for another office, we'd talk about, you know, uh, and I just said, I want to go as high as I can go. And I did. I went as high as I could go. You absolutely <laughs> did. Yeah, right. Absolutely did. Yeah. Let's start with that. When you you didn't end up going to college, you married, had uh, how many kids? Four daughters. Four, and the names? Uh, Linda, Leslie, Norma, and Rebecca. Had the four daughters. Mm -hmm. Were you a stay-at-home mom or did you work? I stayed at home until um, my youngest uh, was um, five, I think, and um, and the oldest was 12. When that happened, when did you say, I want to get out of the house, I want to do something, what oh, yeah. happened? Well, I, um, they, they called me and wanted to know if I wanted to work at the Red Cross. That's how it started. And so I was... Um, the um, uh, programs director at the Red Cross, and um, and then and and my uh, youngest Rebecca was in um, preschool, so I would work while she was in preschool, and and that wasn't uh, I wasn't working very much at that point, and then I ran for school board uh, from there. And uh, and then it went from there. What prompted that run for school board? Well, I had a couple of teachers come uh, to ask me to run, and I hadn't thought of it. And they said, you know, they there was going to be um, 
three people elected to the board at this particular time. And they wanted me to run. And I thought about it. They said there isn't a woman on the board. And um, and so I decided to run. And it was, um, it was my first experience running for anything and you know it's not supposed to be political but it is and so um, I went door to door I mean I was the first person to go door to door for a school board position and it was interesting because everywhere I went I would I, I would get pretty much the same feedback they'd say well there should be a woman on the school board and so that was my theme and uh, and somebody else said this not long ago. I was listening to a, somebody on, on television say, well, I think it was Ed Schultz. He said, you talk to, you get out and talk to people, they'll give you the theme. And that's true. When that night came in the late 1960s and you were elected first woman to the Elgin School Board, that night, did you think you'd win going in? Did you have a good feeling? I didn't know. Um, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, I gave a lot of speeches at the different schools. I was lousy, uh, a lousy speaker. I, I can I can't imagine you know people <laughs> voting for me. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, it was it was an it was such an experience for me. Um, the um, the feedback, the um, uh, what people said, um, it, it was it was quite an experience, really. You know, the first time you run, you got to get used to it. it, it it's a, a whole different thing for anybody when they run for office. Until you run for office, you don't realize what it's like, and um, it. Um, you have to get into the, um, I guess the 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 feeling of of how you approach people. Uh, you know, you don't argue uh, usually unless it's necessary. Um, I, I don't know. It's it's quite a study. Uh, I often thought it would be good to to try to help people that are running for office if they ask me to, and sometimes I have. What's the best advice you would give to somebody who wants to run for office? Well, to talk to everybody you can. Uh, the best thing to do is you don't take anything for granted. I've seen so many candidates that would take things for granted. Wouldn't They wouldn't go on a, a radio station, for instance, that they didn't want to be bothered with. I went on everything I could get that was free. And uh, I was the only one when I ran for state treasurer to go on this um, this one radio station. It was a black radio station. And they covered me. They were so good to me. And, and, and it probably made a big difference. Nobody else went. And um, you never know what's going to uh, help. But now, today, politics are, I think they're much more serious. Uh, the, you know, this started so early today that it's, it's so, it, there is so much time to get mean and nasty and and that's uh, we didn't have all that time in my races um, so you, you weren't you, you got mean and nasty but not right away <laughs> <laughs> wasn't as much time to be mean and nasty right. as there was as there is now that's what I'm trying to say I, I, yeah. I, I right. understand uh, <laughs> serving on Elgin school board what was that like well, it was probably one of the most difficult things I ever did. Uh, people, they care about two things, their money and their kids, and uh, usually in that order. <laughs> 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 I, I remember it was very difficult, and I said everybody should have a chance at this wonderful job. <laughs> <laughs> From the Elgin School Board, where did you end up? Well, then, um, uh, of course, I... I got the, uh, uh, well, let's see, next I ran for clerk of courts, and I lost. I ran against Margaret Hauser, and then uh, I got the license bureau. I called up the governor, asked him for the <laughs> license bureau <laughs> here, <laughs> and they gave it to me. It, w um, 
I said, I want to run for office, and that's how I get my name known. And I remember, uh, I didn't talk to the governor. I talked to his chief of staff. But anyway, they, um, um, they, they, it worked. And, um, and I got the license bureau, and um, it, it was fascinating. I just thought it was a fascinating job. And uh, and I did a good job with it. I I feel it was a real good job. I I took care of the public and and so then when I ran for county treasurer, I got 64 percent of the vote. When you were working at the license bureau and you said I I want to get in charge of this so I can run for office, did you know what office you wanted to run for? I was going to run for clerk of courts again. Again. But they they talked to me about it. They said. Uh, that Ralph Wagner was going to retire, and uh, they wanted me to run for treasurer. Well, then, as it happened, Ralph Wagner didn't retire, and uh, they. Uh, this is a lot of information that I don't know if people know or not. But um, so then I I, w- I was running against Ralph Wagner, <laughs> <laughs> but they they got him out of the race, uh, and uh, and so then. And then I had two, uh, there was two Republicans running, and uh, then I ended up running against one of them. But um, it was, um, it, it, all of this is a real study on on human nature and everything, um, and what goes on within uh, the support that you're going to have. Uh, you have to have the support of your party. And uh, I don't think, sometimes I think people do not have the support of their party when they run. But I think that's very important. Do you want to say why Ralph Wagner was No, no, no. no. I I, I really don't want to go into that on the air. Okay, that's Mm -hmm. absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, When you were with, uh, when you lost the clerk of court uh, (laughs) race, first time you'd lost, what felt like? It was terrible. Mm. I decided I never wanted to have that happen again. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I decided if I ran again and I lost, that was it. I was never going to run. That was it. But I, I won, and and from there it went on. What's it like to be county treasurer? Oh, it's a good job. It's um, it, it, it's a very good job. Uh, I like taking care of money. I think I've told you that before. Uh, I, I took care of money as, uh, at the uh, License Bureau, too, and I, I really enjoyed that, and I had never realized that I would. And um, it, then I, uh, after I, after I, um, uh, let see, after I, l- I lost the License Bureau because the governor uh, lost the election, Governor Gilligan lost. And then uh, I went to work for the auditor, and and it was while I was in the auditor's office that I ran for treasurer, and uh, so that's sort of the progression there. How did you end up running for state treasurer? Well, um, I was um, I had run unopposed the second time for county treasurer, and I went to uh, an event. Uh, at a, a school district, and I can't tell you what school district it was. It was, it was uh, North. Uh, um, anyway, I think it was North. I don't know. Anyway, I went to this school district to listen to um, two political people speak, Gertrude Donahue and and somebody that was in the Senate, and I don't remember his name. And it was from there that uh, she approached me about running for uh, for state treasurer, she said, I would like for you to run, but she said, I don't know. Uh, she said, I'd like for you to, s- you know, say you're going to run for either secretary of state or state treasurer, and um, I, I've got to make up my mind what I'm going to do. But she didn't think she could raise enough money uh, running because of the embezzlement that took place in her office. So I I started out doing all my interviews and everything, which you have to do. You have to go through all of these uh, procedures uh, with uh, 
all the groups and everything that you have to um, get their approval. And I would say that I was running for either <laughs> Secretary of State or Treasurer of State. I wasn't hadn't decided yet. And it took her forever to make up her mind. And <laughs> finally, finally uh, she did. And so then I was running for Treasurer. And, and then I kept hearing about all the things that were wrong with the Treasurer's Office and from people that really knew. And, uh, and it was scary because um, the, the, the level of, of what had happened, it was surprising it hadn't happened sooner. So um, I had my work cut out for me, and, um, and believe me, I did. I had my work cut out for me. When I became state treasurer, then I was running against six men, you know, in the mm -hmm. primary, and then against Bucky Reinhardt in the general. Have you ever met Bucky Reinhardt? I, I have met him. Yeah. What was your feeling on Buck Reinhardt? Well, we were both in the County Treasurer's Association. Um, he was um, he was a big-time treasurer in Franklin County. I was small-time in Marion, Ohio. And um, I had a job in the Treasurer's Association that he wanted. I was the legislative chairman. And he wanted that spot really bad, but he they wouldn't let him have it because of his temper pretty much, I, I think, uh, was primarily the reason. And um, so uh, it was, um, it, that, that was the situation. So Running for office on the state level, what was that like? It's a lot different than running for office in Marion County. You've got to travel the state. You have... Well, I I had uh, a I I had some suggestions from uh, Gertrude Donahue. Uh, the suggestion that I hire this person that was going to run her campaign if she ran, she decided not to run. So I uh, I talked to him and I hired him, and uh, he turned out to be a problem. And he had a drinking problem, and I didn't know he had it. And um, he would call up, and he couldn't take me somewhere, and I had to drive myself, you know, like on the west side of the state or somewhere. It happened a few times. And um, she also, um, uh, she was worried about, uh, Gertrude was worried about this embezzlement and uh, had a fundraiser for herself. Everybody thought it was for me, and uh, she kept all the money herself, and um, I think as a protection against this embezzlement, and she didn't know what was going to happen legally with that. And so it was, um, it was, there was a lot of tough moments, I'll tell you. Did you feel confident election night that you were going to beat Buck Reinhardt? I was pretty, uh, uh, well, I wasn't for sure, but I thought I was going to win. Um, the whole ticket won from top to bottom. Dick Celeste and Tony Celebrezzi and Tom Ferguson and Sherrod Brown and I, we all won. And four years later, we all won again. Yeah. What was it like being state treasurer? It was great. I, I really, you had a lot of responsibility. I had uh, it, it, the amount of money that is in the pension funds, which I took care of, uh, is enormous. And uh, and I started two new programs, the link deposit program for small business and for agriculture. And I started Star Ohio, which is a, um, a an investment pool for government money, which are both both are still going on, uh, as far as I know. Star is. I haven't I I haven't kept track with the new treasurer that's running against Sherrod Brown on exactly what he's doing, but it it was going on up that point. When did the call come? Wh when did you have the hint that they were looking at you for national treasurer? Well, I had a call from the women executives in state government wanting to know if I was interested in uh, an, a job. And I said I was, and, and I told him I was interested in U.S. Treasurer. 
and and it went from there. Um, I had a lot of support uh, in the state. I had um, um, I had the uh, National Democratic Chair, who was David Wilhelm. He was from uh, down in southern Ohio in the Appalachian District uh, when he was here in Ohio. And uh, but then he was national chairman when I was uh, running for this, and I had John Glenn and, and Howard Metzenbaum, and and there had been Hispanic people before me, so they told me they said you know this is a Hispanic spot. Well, I said who's the head of the Hispanics, and they told me, and I went to see him. I said do you want this spot, and they said no, and so. From there on, uh, of course, there was a lot of people after this. But then when uh, this was in the beginning of 93, uh, I, I found that um, it was just two of us, a woman out in Colorado named Polly Baca and I. And, and, and it took from uh, the spring until September to find out that, uh, that I was going to get it uh, at that point in September. And then I had to go through the uh, s the Senate committee. I had to go visit all the Senate committee one on one and one, and uh, they passed it unanimously. And then I was sworn in on March 1st of '94. When what do you think swung it for you over the lady in Colorado? Well, the lady in Colorado was not a treasurer, and that wasn't a requirement for this job. Uh, I'm the first time that there I've been treasurer at all three levels of government. She had run for Congress and had lost, and um, I, I had the support of Al Gore. I had uh, the support of, of so many people, and um, and it they knew that when I was appointed there would be a Republican replace me which uh, was something that was a concern because the governor was Voinovich at that time and uh, and that's the reason uh, that I think it took as long as it did. Do you remember where you were when you were told that it was going to be you? I was in my, s yes, I was in my office. I couldn't stop smiling. They they told me you can't tell anybody, and I told my husband, and that was it. I didn't tell anybody else, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it it was uh, and and it was like a couple of weeks before I could tell anybody. Um, I was I had to give speeches in the meantime, and um, that had already been um, put on my schedule, and I couldn't uh, not do them. And I, some woman in <laughs> In one of the audiences, said, "Well, who else? Uh, uh, who else is running?" I said, "Nobody," <laughs> and that was true. It was just me, and I had to wait before you know it could be known. <laughs> well, I, I tell you that that March first, nineteen ninety four, certainly was a banner day. Yes, for, it was. For, yeah. for, and for Mary in Ohio as well as well as you, I tell you what. Let's take a look. March first, nineteen. Oh, you've got it there. I got it here. So, Mary Ellen, congratulations to you. And now, uh, if you will uh, stand here and uh, Norm here and come on in close ranks if you wish. If you would raise your right hand and repeat after me. Uh, I state your name. I, Mary Ellen Lithgow. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office. On which I am about to enter. On which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you.
uh, went into public service on a local school board in 1969, I had no idea it was going to lead me here. After uh, 25 years, a quarter of a century from Marion, Ohio to Washington, D.C., and I have loved every step of the way. I wanted to just present something to the secretary and the vice president that I have with me today. We're talking about bus, and we're talking about uh, uh, greenbacks, and I want to say there are a lot of Buckeyes in this room, I know. <laughs> and we're proud to be Buckeyes, right? Well, I'd like to present one to the Vice President, <laughs> and one to Mr. Secretary, <laughs> and <laughs> What an applause, Mary Ellen. The, the room was packed. They had originally put chairs in there. They didn't have room for the chairs. They took the chairs <laughs> out, and it was just packed with people. I had uh, the treasurers, uh, state treasurers were there, and the people from Marion, and uh, it was a, a great day. Yeah. When you see that mm -hmm. here, uh, boy, what's it been now, 16, 18 years later, yeah. what do you think? Oh, I, I think it was great. I, it was a wonderful opportunity. I would think that every day when I went to work. Think, boy, I'm so lucky to have this job. Uh, I'm the only 39 other people ever had it, you know. Mm. Yeah. It truly, truly, it, it was, and it was the first person from Marion since Harding, and only other, to my knowledge, to go to the national level. Mm -hmm. of wh wh what does that mean when you hear that now? Well, it's uh, it's good to hear that. Yeah. And first woman. Yeah. Always right. will be the first woman. Yeah. What was the job like as United States Treasurer? Well, you sort of made your own job. I I was I had the oversight of the Bureau of Engraving and Printing that makes our currency and the mints that make our coins. And then they asked me to uh, market the savings bonds after I was in there a few days, and and I did. Um, it it was a big job. Um, it was um, involving about, uh, well, with both the Bureau of Engraving and Printing and the Mints, it was about 5,000 people. And uh, all over the United States, you know, the locations, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing is in D.C. and Fort Worth, Texas, and the Mints are in Philadelphia, Denver, uh, San Francisco, West Point, and Fort Knox. And then the savings bonds... Um, I traveled a lot for savings bonds, and um, it was uh, it was a it was a very very good job. It was a fun job. I um, I really had to mold it the way I wanted it to be, uh, and you have that opportunity at that level. Um, they tell you, you know, they give you the basics, but. Um, from there, you take it, and you do with it what you want. I want to go back to that day for just one second, because you've seen it now, the dress in action, and we have the dress that yes. you wore here. Mm -hmm. Let's pan over to the dress here. Now, Mary Ellen, was there any, obviously that was going to be a big day for you. Yes, right. Any particular reason you chose this dress? Well, I really liked it. Yeah, it, it was uh, a dress I thought looked, um, it looked like a government dress. <laughs> well, you, you've, you've always been, and in, in every, and in, in today, to this day, you dress very well. You have a knack for that. Um, you dress very colorful, which is very nice. Always uh -huh. was that also any thought behind this dress? Well, yes, I, I like the, uh, uh, I like the color, um, and, and you know, I like the. Uh, uh, I think it looks like. Um, government, the um, chains and everything. Do you want to yeah. tell us where you got this dress? I got it in Columbus, and I can't remember the name of the store. It was a big store in the shopping center right down, uh, you know, my office was very close to the uh, downtown shopping center there, but I can't remember the name of that store, but I'm sure people would know what it was. Um, I, um, but that's where I got it. It's a very nice dress. Very nice, and but you and you've worn it after that day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I wore it a lot. Very yeah. nice dress. Mm -hmm. 
three um, things I want to talk about uh, while you were U.S. Treasurer that I thought were, were very important. Um, first of all, the, the quarters. The yes, the how state quarters. State quarters. Mm -hmm. How did that all come about? The state quarters, well, actually, uh, Canada had done this program. And uh, they were discussing it in Treasury. And, and, of course, I was in all those meetings. And I said, you know, it would be a good working relationship between the federal government and the states. I felt that it was um, an opportunity to have the states uh, tell their story on a coin. And, and then there was something that happened that we didn't even realize that, that people would save it and it would, uh, it would create a lot of money. F we had projected how much money it would create for the general fund. And it, it created much more because oh. everybody was saving them. It, it turned out to be, I think, the most uh, I, I, the most interesting thing done probably with money in the last 150 years. Yes. They were so worried about the South, especially South Carolina. They were afraid that uh, South Carolina would put the Confederate flag on it. So the, you know, when that uh, was discussed, they decided to have the secretary uh, have the final say on the design and uh, in order to protect that. And, um, yeah, it was when they, uh, when they uh, decided to do it, it, was, um, it turned out to be such a fun program for everybody and a lot of excitement about it. Absolutely. I remember people going to the bank when the people, I bet that's the only time in the nation's history when people knew when their bank's armored car was going to <laughs> arrive because they wanted to see if any new quarters were going to be on there. Really? Because they were snapped up so quickly. Well, you know, I struck the very first quarter in Delaware, which was the first state. Uh, Delaware, uh, they would bring in this big press. I don't know if a lot of people have seen them make coins, but it's a tremendous pressure comes down on that metal to make the coin. And so what you do, you press a button, and, the, it, and it strikes that coin, and, and then um, they put it, they mounted it in a, um, a, a mounting, a, a box, sort of. It's a triangular uh, box, and um, so that you can view the front and the back. There's two quarters, cause so you can view the front and the back. And, and then I, w I did the same thing at uh, Pennsylvania, which was the second state. And I did the same thing at uh, New Jersey, which is the third state. And then I went to, uh, I think I was at every state. Uh, the last state was Virginia. I, I did New York, and then the next state was Virginia, and that was the last state that I did. And that was so interesting because they had the, the large ships on it, the three ships, and um, they had replicas of those in behind me when we had the ceremony. I mean, it was the in the water and we were at the water and um, yeah all of those all those ceremonies were were tremendously interesting uh, you usually had the the governor and uh, and other elected officials how many hours of travel do you think you logged this national oh, treasure uh, it was unreal I, I I tell you one time I went from um, I had to go to Hawaii to uh, release a commemorative, it was a, no, it was a um, savings bond, uh, an inflation bond that w had the uh, Hawaiian senator's name on it. And I flew all night coming back, I, I flew at night, and then we had the Sacagawea ceremony at the White House that day, and then I went to a... Um, commemorative coin for uh, Robert E. Lee at uh, Mount Vernon and sat beside Mrs. Robert E. Lee the fourth. <laughs> 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 and um, and uh, that, that, was, uh, that was what it was. I mean, you just went and, and it was constant. That was the job. Yeah. If you go to Wikipedia and search Mary Ellen Withrow, one of the factoids that comes up in your biography is that you were one of the, if not the most visible treasurer. 
Why was that important to you? I wanted to do the best job that I could, and you can't do it staying in your office. Um, when I went to promote anything, it made a tremendous difference. They, when I went to the coin shows, they would sell a lot more whatever they were selling, whether it was uh, engraved uh, printings of things or uh, money. I mean, I was signing money. They'd sell the money. And um, when, I, when I went out on savings bonds, they could get a big crowd and sell better savings bonds. It, was, it, it made a tremendous difference for me to be there. And um, I enjoyed it. I liked it. Y you're a people person. Yes. Absolutely. I've always been a people person, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, uh, which I think is very interesting, we talked about this on another show recently, but I think it's worth noting in this biography. Uh, you're in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yes. Uh huh. Signing more currency. Yes, I signed more currency than anyone in history. I still hold it. Isn't uh, how does that make you feel? Because that's that's something. That's lots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a fun accolade. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, we go to 2000, and you've been serving now for six years. Uh, Bill Clinton's ending eight years. He's had his eight years. By the way, what was Bill Clinton like in your opinion? He was terrific. Terrific. Yeah, he was smart, personable. Talk about somebody that liked people. Uh, yeah, he was terrific. Still showing that today. Yeah. He, he's coming to an end. Al Gore is running. We don't have an incumbent. George W. Bush on the other side. Um, chances are you know that if Gore wins, you're staying mm -hmm. in your position. Bush wins, you're obviously not staying. Uh, that November night comes, and it's the most bizarre November night there's ever been in election history. They give Florida to Gore and then they give it to Bush and then they take it back from Bush and then right. two weeks later. Now your job's depending on what happens to the, this with the Supreme Court and what are you feeling when this oh, is all I'm going on? Oh, I'm feeling, I was under tremendous pressure, yeah. You don't know what you're going to have to do and uh, yeah, it was rough, yeah. When the verdict came down that December day, in 2000, mm -hmm. and you knew you were done, what did you think? I thought things were pretty crooked. You want my yeah. honest opinion. Well, that's, that's, that's <laughs> did you feel it was going to go that way after election night? Uh, well, I, I don't know. It, I felt that they should have counted all the ballots. That's what I felt, and they didn't. You know, and I felt that the Supreme Court was very political, and it's not supposed to be, and I had a bad feeling about the Supreme Court. When the ruling came down, as I say, and you knew that you were going to vacate in January, what did you feel when you knew that was a realization? Well, I was uh, devastated. <laughs> yeah, it, it was horrible. It was like losing an election. It felt like I'd lost the election, yes, really. What was your last day in office like? They told us we had to get out, and, and I mean, you had to be out. And I had the Secret Service said they'd watch my things because I couldn't get a truck to uh, take my things to my house and until uh, it was over a weekend, and um, so they said they'd watch everything. And uh, so th that's sort of what went on. Um. Was there ever any talk, because there doesn't happen a lot, and certainly doesn't happen nowadays, but there have been bipartisan uh, presidents where pre a president came in and kept a person in that position who was... Oh, it's not going to happen. Not, it wasn't going to happen. No, it happened in the past. Um, there, uh, There's a treasure that was there under Abraham Lincoln. He was there for three treasures. There was one under way back in the beginning that was there under um, six or seven treasures, and but it's not going to happen today. I'll tell you right now. What's the reason? Too political. What about the Treasury Office? In a, uh, I guess I can understand Vice President, uh, maybe Senators, Congressmen. When it applies to the Treasury Office, why is it important that they be of the same party? Uh, well, y it wouldn't have to be. That's what I yeah, think. It wouldn't have to be. It's um, it's just that whoever comes in 
wants to have responsibility for as much as he can so that he can keep an eye on everything. It would be my judgment of it. Is there also something to the fact of paying back favors? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking of that, do you feel that possibly one of the reasons that you were chosen was that you were Ohio's treasurer? Yes. I I had been president of the National Association of State Treasurers the year before. We had gone to visit President Clinton at the White House, and um, that had some bearing on it. Um, I had a tremendously good record as as state treasurer. Um, my investment record was was really good, and um, then there was the. Uh, the loyalty factor, I think that enters into it, too. Absolutely. When when you went home January 2000 and, uh, 2000, 2001, mm -hmm. what was that like to go from this job with so much responsibility, traveling all the time, to basically nothing at that point? No right. job. For the well, first time in a long time. Yeah, I still had obligations. I had... Uh, speeches to make. I had to, uh, no secretary to do it. I had to do my own travel and all that. Um, and I still was giving speeches. Um, and it was, um, it, you know, the, the the secretary is no longer there. <laughs> what, what was it like? Uh, why did you decide you went to Bethesda, Maryland at that point? I, that's where I always lived. You always lived while you were in office. Yeah. Why did you decide to stay there once you were out of office? Well, I talked to Norman. I said, "Wait, what are we going to do?" And he said, "Well, he said let's stay there. He was he liked it there, and um, so we we decided to stay there until 2011. Yeah, until 2011. And you came yeah. back to marry. Right, I did. Most people don't do that. <laughs> Most uh, I I don't know what the number is. But I bet it's a very low percentage of people who went to the national level who ended up back in the town they were born in before they, they left yeah. us. Well, my family's here, and I tell you, I'm sure glad I came back. Really? Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, this, this town is such a sense of community. I, it's amazing. You don't feel that in uh, Bethesda, Maryland. Of course, I didn't get involved in things there like I, I do here. Um, but it, it's just that this is my home, you know, and I, I, I know just about all the people, although there's a lot of people I don't know, too. <laughs> <laughs> but glad to be back. Yes, and glad we're to be back. glad to have you back. Uh, what do you want to do now? You're back in Marion for the rest of your life, or do you plan on maybe taking off someplace else at some point? Well, I, um, I think I'm going to be here, um. I, I don't have any plans. I'm, we might go to Florida this winter, but that's it. Um, so what do you want to do? Well, what's what's the rest of Mary Ellen Withrow's life look like? I'm telling you, I'm so busy. <laughs> I, I, I'm really busy. And uh, so I'm I'm doing what I like to do. Are you happy doing it? Oh, yes. I love it. Yeah. Uh, for people who might look at this years from now, because this will be avail available on the Internet, in 2012, um, October, heading into October, what is Mary Ellen Withrow doing? What do you stay busy at? Well, I'm doing all the um, fun things at uh, Primrose, and I'm in clubs and the Historical Society and DAR and all of those uh, organizations. And, you know, you go to the palace and you see entertainment and it, it's um, it's a great life do people treat you different oh I don't think so not the well in a way they do I guess but um, the people that I've known they they know me you know they everybody says I haven't changed <laughs> I, I, I would I, I didn't know you too well before you left but I'd have to say you're certainly you don't put on airs no I don't put on airs. which is you know. very which is very nice uh, would you ever consider giving it all up because I think what you do now is a job it, you know you accept things you go places you're very busy would you ever get to a time you're well past conventional retirement age would you say I want to stay home no, I, no no not not unless I couldn't do these things you never know when that's going to happen but uh, as long as I can stay active I want to stay active 
My my husband says my social life has increased 100 <laughs> percent. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, coming back home really did kind of change your life in it, a way. It did, yes. Uh, you know, when you're out of office, you're out of office. And uh, you really, um, uh, you know, you, you don't know if you want to join anything there or not. You know, you don't know the women that well. Uh, it, it's different. You're, it's just not home. <laughs> Ab yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Are you scared of anything? No, not ri no, nothing. Mm. Do you think in your political life being a woman has helped or hurt you more? Oh, it's helped me. My goodness. Uh, it's absolutely. But there were times I would imagine. Oh, I was scared to death. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is the 60s, 70s, 80s. Yeah. Did, did people treat you differently because you were a woman? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was, I was in so many meetings with all men at banks and so forth, yeah. Is there anything on your agenda that you still want to do? Well, uh, I have my goals. <laughs> what, what, what are the goals? <laughs> now you're going to ask me what they are. <laughs> and and um, I, I can't really say what they are. It's just that I want to have fun and enjoy people. And, and um, I, I just enjoy life, you know. So I've asked you this before, and I'm always hoping for a different answer. Would you ever run for office again? Oh, no. <laughs> no, why not? No, I'm not at my age. You, you, this is not the age you run for office, Scott. But, but don't you feel, and, and this is just my <laughs> opinion, we're going to opinion now, that if a city council position opened up, no, not on your you life. would never do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> just because? Well, I tell you, I, I never wanted to be in that type of a situation. I was always the treasurer, okay? The only time was when I was on the school board. You have to influence, say, three other people to vote for you, with you, in order to get anything accomplished. When you're the treasurer, you're running the show. Now, when I was U.S. treasurer, I was not running the show, but I was working for the, the secretary of the treasury, and he was running the show, and that was fine with me. Uh, but I didn't, you know, people in Congress have to have to influence everybody else. To, I mean, in order to get anything through, it's a heck of a job. Let, let me put it this way. Um, anytime you ask a politician, usually, who's not in office if they're going to run, they usually say no to some degree, I think. Mm -hmm. Is there any circumstance under which somebody came to you and said, you know, We'd like you to run for this. And it, and it was the position. <laughs> you thought, I could do it. I could get there. It would not hinder my life too much. Would you do it? Well, you should never say never, but I think the chances are pretty slim, Scott. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, you never can tell what's going to happen. Yeah. You never can tell, especially yeah. in Ohio, <laughs> especially in Ohio. Favorite memory in the past 82 years? Oh, boy, there's a lot of them. Um, I, I tell you, I've got some great memories. Um, you know, the swearing-ins were pretty much fun. <laughs> yeah, they, they look <laughs> yeah. like fun. That looks like yeah. a good party. Yeah, it was a good group. And then we went across the street to the Washington Hotel, and uh, a blizzard was starting to form. <laughs> 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 and the people were worried about getting home. But, um, no, the, um, the swearing-ins uh, in Columbus were great, too. I had three of those. And I'll tell you, the first time I won for county treasurer was a wonderful time. I remember it was I had the party at my house, and I couldn't I couldn't get through the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a great time, and yeah, good party. Yeah, good party. Least favorite memory? Oh, I don't know. I don't want to think about those. <laughs> don't forget them. <laughs> forget them. Yeah, right. Favorite 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 politician <laughs> favorite politician <laughs> favorite politician. <laughs> You've ever uh, uh, oh favorite favorite politician yes. oh I think Al Gore really yeah. more than Clinton oh I liked Clinton but Al Gore was my favorite yeah did we read him wrong the national public Ohio went for Bush in that election 
I know they did, uh, but it was a bunch of, I think it was some bad choices. He didn't have Clinton campaign for him, which it was because of the situation. And um, I think that lost him. I think Ralph Nader being the in the election lost Florida for him um, outside of the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a that was a mess. It I mean, I think we can. It it was lawyers. Uh, it was how fast you could get a lawyer in there to take care of yourself. That's what you were dealing with. And I certainly, I think a lot of people agree with you. I think probably fifty to sixty agree, 50, or maybe forty to fifty disagree. But any, it's strange. I thought that he didn't carry Ohio. I, I mean, it all ended up being Florida in that election. Yeah. But strange he didn't carry Ohio. If he'd carried Ohio, it wouldn't really have mattered. Right. I don't think he carried Tennessee. He didn't. No. His home state. I know. Well, they felt they felt he had um, he had not been home enough. That that was the what I kept hearing. Um, and then there was the gun law. I think that gun law had a lot to do with that election. Very well could have. Very yeah, that's what I kept hearing all the time when I went to different places was about the gun law. And, and uh, it was West Virginia and uh, Kentucky and through there that uh, they, were, they were not with him. I don't know if you'll answer this, but I hope you will. Least favorite politician you've ever met. Oh, oh gosh. I've got a lot of favorite, least favorites. <laughs> There's a few running right now. <laughs> well, you know, hey, you, and, and the truth is, the truth is, you know, I ask that, I say, I don't know if you'll answer it or not, but you've come out against some politicians in the public eye. Yeah, I, I tell you, there's um, uh, s there's a lot of um, things that I would consider in that statement on on least favored. It, was it was it least favored because of this, because of that, and I d I don't think I will answer that, um, but. Um, boy, I tell you, I'm coming close to answering as well. Oh, oh, no, well, give no, it to us, Mario. No, 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 no you no, won't. No, but somebody's uh -uh. in your mind. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. No. <laughs> but somebody's <laughs> in the mind. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For what reason is this person in your mind? And because uh, they're incompetent. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and we definitely don't want to say they're. Are they still with us? Yes. Okay. Okay. We'll leave it at that on that one. Okay. Guess. People can guess out there. Uh, okay. uh, two things I want to go into uh, before we wrap this up, uh, and this has been fun going down memory lane. Um, some things you've done since you left office in the last uh, 12 years or so is uh, came out for um, gambling in Ohio, casinos. Yes, yes. Uh, well, yeah. before we do that, let's see the commercial you take oh, okay. for gambling. Oh, for, it was well issue you've three. You've been busy, haven't I've you? I've been busy. Here we issue go. Issue three's West Virginia casino opponents claim the casinos would be bad for Ohio. They're wrong. They're working to protect their own out-of-state casinos. A recent State of Ohio report gives the facts. It confirms the casinos will be taxed on all wagers, and the issue three revenue projections are nearly identical. In fact, most of the new revenue will go to every Ohio county. Vote yes on issue three. That was done in my home. Is that right? Yeah. Well the the uh, the guy that mowed our lawn was starting to mow the lawn when when I was. You know how many times you have to go through a commercial uh, while they're taping it and. Uh, and we, uh, I said, he, well, he was supposed to come two days ago, but he came right when we were doing the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a beautiful home you had there in Bethesda. I did have a beautiful home. That's a beautiful globe. That, that sticks out in that picture of me, that globe, globe. that's behind you. Let me in, see. Uh, let's see if we can get that in the picture there. It might pop up there. Over here. No, it keeps changing. I don't know what. Oh, there, back over there. I think you're talking about the lamp. Oh, is that a lamp? Yeah. Oh, I thought it looks like a globe to me. No, there's no globe. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. Why did why did you feel it was important to come out for that? Oh, I had felt that while I was state treasurer. I said, you know, we're losing all this money, and um, people are going to other states and gambling, and people are going to gamble. If they like to gamble, they're going to gamble. 
And uh, I just felt Ohio was losing out tremendously, and we needed the money. It did pass, I should say, but in Marion County it failed. Yeah, well, so much for that. Any any take you have on any read? Well, the churches were very strong against it, but um, the money's starting to come in now. I I just heard that um, hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars. Okay, pretty good stuff. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I want to just shoot some names out at you uh, about things going on here in 2012. We do have a presidential election in uh, two months, a little under two months, five weeks. Barack Obama, what do you think? Oh, I'm all for him. Mitt Romney. (laughs) I'm not for him. (laughs) What do you make of the guy? Well, the guy is searching for himself, I think. Uh, I I think he's he's, uh, not... He's hard to figure out, and he's rich, and it's um, it's a problem. We talked about this before we went on air a little bit, and I want to bring it up because I think it's a, a tremendous statistic. One in three Republicans and over 30% of people in the state of Ohio believe our president of four years is not a citizen of the United States. It's unreal. How, 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 how does that happen? I don't know. I can't figure it out. It's it's um, it's not it's coming from people that are trying to cause trouble. It, it I can I couldn't believe I guess the number I know it's there I just mm-hmm. couldn't believe the number. Yeah. Um, before we is there anything you ever had to hold back on in public life? Is there ever an issue you felt? Cause the big ones abortion gun control uh, taxes obviously. Is there anything you ever had to hold back on? when you were running for office because it might have been too hot? All po- I think all politicians do that to some degree. That you can talk about now? Well, I can't think of anything. You spoke it all while you were as, as far as I can remember, maybe I'm not remembering everything, but I, I don't think there was anything. Yeah. Um, before, I, I do want to ask you uh, how you want to be remembered, um, so we'll get to that in a second, but I, I've got to do this because... Uh, running for, well, our current state treasurer is Josh Mandel, and he's running for state senator uh, against Sherrod Brown. And you taped one of the all-time <laughs> great commercials <laughs> that people can see when Josh Mandel was running for treasurer, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. You, for his uh, opponent, uh, Kevin Boyce. Yes, right. Let's take a look at that commercial. Oh, right. I'm Mary Ellen Withrow. I'm sickened by the shameless attacks of Representative Mandel on Treasurer Boyce. The Columbus Dispatch condemns Mandel's bigotry and says his attacks aren't true. I agree. Kevin Boyce is a good Christian man of integrity and faith. He saved taxpayers millions and took two voluntary pay cuts. Mandel is practicing the worst type of politics. That tells you a lot about him. Josh Mandel, you should be ashamed. Now that's that's a hard-hitting commercial. Yeah. Uh, When you see that, what do you think? I think, good, I'm glad I did it. How, how were you approached about doing that? Oh, um, they wanted to know if I'd do a commercial for Kevin Boyce, and I said yes. And um, they read it to me over the phone, and it was fine. Um, and um, it was it was on a, I think it was on a weekend. I was, I was here in Ohio, and... Um, they they got me. I was uh, actually I was out at um, uh, 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 I was delivering pictures. <laughs> <laughs> People wanted pictures, and so um, yeah. I and so they they set it up for the I think that evening, and I grabbed an outfit and we went down and we shot it uh, down um, uh, down near Columbus, and um, uh, I. I didn't look at it. I uh, I should have looked at it after I did it because that's what you should always do. And um, I I thought I could have done a little bit better job, is what I thought, you know. But anyway, it it was it, I did it and it was done. So a better job as far as what? By being um, by my inflection with my voice. Mm-hmm. Well, come, I mean, that that is a very strong political ad. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think anybody would say that, to say, I'm ashamed of you. 
Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I was. Uh, well, I that's still I am. Well, that, that, that I think that's fine. I think everybody has their own convictions. Yeah. Did you ever give any thought to saying that in a commercial that was going to go statewide? Was that written for you, or did you come up with that? How does that No, happen? it was written for me. But you I had no problem saying I had no problem. And never a thought given to that's going to go statewide? And no, no. As long – that, I guess for me, um, ashamed is a big word. Why were you ashamed of Josh Mando? Well, it was what he had done. And I Personal can't attacks. Yes, uh-huh. Today, he's running mm-hmm. at, at this time mm-hmm. against uh, Sherrod Brown. Uh, what do you make of him today? Have you seen the uh, Liar, Liar, Pants on Fire? I okay. have. Okay. I need to say no more. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I understand. Yeah. Um, final question, which I wanted to get to. How do you want to be remembered? You're certainly going to be remembered. It's It'll be in the history books. It'll be part of Marion County history. Uh, it'll be part of national history, state history. Uh, the first woman to ever uh, be on Elgin School Board, the first treasurer to be local, state, and national, Guinness Book of World Record holder, second politician from Marion to go to the national level, first woman to do it. How do you want to be remembered in your own words? Well, gosh, that sounds pretty heavy. I, I really felt when I was U.S. Treasurer that I, I wanted to leave my legacy with the young people that's when I started going to the schools and talking about saving money. Uh, I, uh, that Treasury wanted me to talk about saving money. And so I was doing this in my speeches to adults, and I thought, I'm not getting anywhere. I need to talk to the young people and get them in the habit of saving money. So I thought, this is the way I want to be remembered, that I'm trying to influence young people to have a good life and and think about what they're doing because, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that are refused at the federal level because of things in their past. And I would tell them that, um, you know, you need to lead a good life because um, you never know what your opportunities are going to be. And, um, and, And wouldn't it be sad if you had the opportunity to have a job like this? And you couldn't, you wouldn't get it. What would your parents think? Oh, they'd be so proud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, about they would. their daughter Mary Ellen. Yeah, right. My dad would have been all over the state uh, campaigning. I know he would have. And if my grandfather had been around, he would have been <laughs> all over the state campaigning too. Yeah. What do your grandkids and uh, kids think of grandma and mother? Mm, oh, they, um, they're used to it. Um, my my youngest uh, grandchildren they um, they they haven't experienced as much as my older grandchildren have. They were in all the swearing in ceremonies and everything, and um, uh, th- I'm just their grandma, you know. Uh, although th- I got my name on the money <laughs> <laughs> when they see it now once in a while, but um, it, it's um, I don't know what they do think, to be honest with you. It'd be interesting to know. Yeah, you ought to interview them. I should. I should. We should all have them come in one day. Yeah. You know, one of the great moments since you came back was we were doing radio at the time, and I remember I'd asked you to do something one day, and you said you had to go babysit. Mm -hmm. And I thought, most people, I can guarantee (laughs) you in their mind, think that the former treasurer is not out babysitting. (laughs) But I think that's great that you do things like that. Uh Uh-huh. I don't do it very much, but um, they're they're getting grown up a little bit. Yeah. Well, I always say this, and I think it's the best time to say it, is is in a a career interview like this to look back. By the way, is it fun to look back at your career? Oh, yeah. Yes. I, uh, I love my career. I mean, it was something that happened that I never thought would be, and and it's a... Uh, I'm very proud of it. Well, I always say this, and I'm going to say it here again, and I I know Mary Ellen's heard me tell this story before, but uh, the first time I met Mary Ellen, I was working at uh, WMRN. It It was in between Christmas and New Year's break, and nobody comes in during Christmas and New Year's. The office is even closed. And uh, I, for the longest time, I couldn't get in touch with you. I ended up getting in touch with you. Lo and behold, you happened to be in Marion on break. And I was thinking if I could just get her on the phone during this time, it would be great to do an interview. And I called you up because, of course, I'd heard Mary Ellen Withrow all through my middle school, elementary, high school. You know, you, you were in office and uh, college. And I called you up, and it was 
I think it was New Year's Eve, if I'm not mistaken, morning, New Year's Eve morning. And I called you up and I said, I'm, I've got 10 to 11.30 free. Could we do an interview? And you said, what time do you want me there? <laughs> and you came in, which people don't do, and you took questions and we had fun and took pictures and everybody was so excited that you were coming because I don't think you'd been on radio too often at Probably that point not. since yeah. leaving the national uh, office. And every time, every time we've met since then, you have always been very kind to me. And, and that's, you know, there's nothing to do with politics for anybody out there watching. Mm -hmm. You're just a kind lady and such a legacy. And the, and the happiness that everybody felt in Marion when you were in office, uh, you know, we all walked around, I think, a little straighter. You know, we were a little... <laughs> Hey, you know, somebody <laughs> from Marion is, is, is working in Washington. Yeah. Well, I had a lot of visitors, and that was so great. You know, all the schools and everybody came, and uh, so many people came that, you know, wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I say get a good look, because for however long it lasts, and I think it's going to last a long time, uh, you're not going to see Mary Ellen Withrow's like again. Thank you, everybody, for taking a trip down memory lane. Take care.